All right. This is, I, I guess, let's just say this is from our America Ain't As Free As America Thinks It Is department. And the headline, boom. Land of the Free, Harvard study ranks America worse in the West for fair elections. This is from globalresearch.ca. I'll read the, the key part here. As if further proof could possibly be needed of the sorry state of the American electoral process, a new study just ranked the United States dead last in electoral, electoral integrity among established Western democracies. I don't know what qualifies as a established Western democracy, but whatever. The Electoral Integrity Project, EIP, uh, their 2015 year in elections report is an independent, oh my, wait, wait, this is the 2015 election. They didn't even talk about the 2016 election. Wow. If there's a dead last, 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 then they're probably dead last, 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 last. Now, instead of just dead last. Uh, independent research project by 2,000 elections experts from Harvard University and the University of Sydney in Australia assembled to examine the world's elections. The EIP states that the core notion of electoral integrity refers to agreed international principles and standards of elections applying universally to all countries worldwide throughout the electoral cycle including during the pre-electoral period, the campaign, and on polling day, and its aftermath. I'll just, you know, one more little, I should have highlighted this too. The report gathers assessments from over 2,000 experts to evaluate the perceived integrity of all 100 national parliamentary and presidential contests held between July 1st, 2012, to December 31st, 2015, in 139 countries worldwide. These include 54 national elections last year. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I find really interesting about this article globalresearch.ca has done. I'm not sure why. Why are you actually measuring electoral integrity? Because there's no such thing. I mean, even if even if all the votes counted, <laughs> well, I I suppose I, I I'll I'll amend that. If 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 there's some sort of mm, very local election on a very like not electing a candidate so much as electing or voting on an issue, like do we raise our taxes? Or do we not raise our taxes? I'm surprised at how many times people vote and say, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 go ahead, I vote. Well, well, go ahead, raise the taxes. They're usually the people that are not going to be hurt that much by the taxes being raised, but that's another issue. But the assumption here that somehow that elections have some sort of integrity to them in the first place is, well, you, you realize where you're starting from and where you're starting from is that democracy is a good way for a small group of people to determine how to rule over a large segment of other people. And it's, it's totally cool if a majority decides what a minority might like, might not want to do. In other words, mobocracy, 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 is cool. But even notwithstanding that reality, you think you live in the land of the free, folks. Freedom is a relative thing. There are areas in your life where depending on where you live, you have more opportunity or less opportunity to make a free will choice to exercise your preference. For instance, if you live in Pennsylvania and you prefer to carry a gun, a concealed carry, 
it's relatively easy to get a concealed carry license. Relatively easy. You you do have to pay, and you have to get an approval, but it's eh, it's it's relatively easy to get an approval. So you, you, there's not too many barriers between you and exercising your preference to carry a gun. But if you live in New Jersey, well, then if carrying a gun, concealed carry is your preference, well, your chances of actually getting it legally are pretty small. So if if you go through all the paperwork, which you're going to have to fill out a lot of paperwork, you're going to pay more money than you do in Pennsylvania and and more more likely than not, you're not going to get approved. So if you go through that process, well, and you don't get approved, then you have to make a decision. If, if I want to exercise that preference to carry a gun, I have to realize that I'm putting myself at risk of having the weight of the state come down upon me, and I could be threatened with guns and thrown in a cage or killed if I resist. So freedom is a relative thing. If you live in New Jersey and you don't really care about carrying a gun concealed, it's not really an issue for you. You may There may be other things in New Jersey that you're more free to do in Pennsylvania. In China, if you want to set up a local business, not, I'll say not a brick and mortar business, but a little, you know, Put a table up somewhere, throw some merchandise on it, set it anywhere you want, go to business. Hey, dude, you can actually do that in China way easier than you can in the United States. The chances of somebody showing up in China to ask you for your papers, hmm, slim to none. In the United States, it's, it's much, much more likely that that'll happen. So if your preference is to make a living with a small roadside business and you don't want to be bothered china china is the place to go you have more freedom in china so what this report is is really talking about is is within the parameter that accepts that democracy is a good thing and it's measuring accountability integrity by the candidate being chosen that the majority of people truly want in the United States, you have a lot less likely chance of having that happen than you do in whatever these traditional democracies are. So yay, America land of the free.